23rd of September. Feels very autumnal. We've got leaves blowing around the yard. Oh, my dad's wedding anniversary, so happy wedding anniversary to them. I'm not sure how many years it is. I'll try and find out. Anyway, we're going to see if we can clean some seed today and then drill some more cover crops. The crop master is in the shed. In fact, Len's dirty. The crop master is in the shed. It now runs. I think my dad bled it yesterday while I wasn't there and he's been driving it around the yard. But apparently it goes really fast because it's got overdrive. The tractor's all tucked up safely in the shed. Just trying to find the drill. I think Bill and Joe have still got it. James is off for a few days doing building a KFC with his mini digger. So we're gonna move the chipper right to the back of the yard to give us a bit more room and then we can get a big stockpile of tree waste ready for him to chip when he's back. Sam's just pushing it up there with the 10 meter Merlin. It's not often you put the pallet forks on and they are set exactly right to fit this skip. And I thought they were when I started filming, but they're clearly not. Don't. I'll have to just push them out wide. There we come. Just need to tweak them a little bit. Push that one a little bit. Ninety-five percent of the time, they're never right. I thought I was lucky then, but I wasn't. This is the skip that the scrap comes out of. So if anything metal goes through the chip of that belt on the top, that rubber one there flicks it into the scrap skip. So it's normally for like nails and screws and bits of fence and washing lines. Sam's just moving it now with the Merlot. I'm just gonna move out of his way with the mini Merlot. The guards are up because we need to change all the one of them solenoids that was messing up the other day. Ordered them off eBay though at 11 o'clock and they were here the next day for nine o'clock in the morning. As you know, I bent the boom section the other day. So I'm gonna unbolt it now. Hopefully it'll be dead easy to do because everything's nice and new and shiny. I've got to put a new brake back into it. And I've got a new tube as well. So I need to cut all these pipes. Oh no, I might not. I might be able to just slide it all out actually. Take the nozzles off and put it to the new one. Ordered some stuff off Amazon to go in the sprayer. So it's a spanner roll, 6 to 32 mil. Set of Allen keys, metric and imperial, because some of the uh, hydraulic fittings are imperial. Screwdriver set. And then I've got a socket set as well. To put in there and then some spanners and some uh, clips and um, snips. So I've got tools with me, because the other day when I had that problem with the boom, I had no tools with me whatsoever. And the tools out of the old spray are all a bit rusty and a bit manky. So I've ordered a new set. So I'm going to put all them in it now. 600 horsepower. <laughs> Pretty quick, that. <laughs> got the new boom on now that's a bit straight, straighter, obviously, than that one that looks really mangled. Sam's got the first spreader on, he's going to spread some slug pellets. Put a time lapse camera there to film me doing this. Unfortunately, he did part the Merlot in the way for quite a bit of it, so I didn't notice. So I don't know how much of this I've actually got on time lapse. But I'm just swapping the nozzle bodies over from that bent pipe to this one and then plumbing it all back up. So luckily, I, uh, I've got the other side to copy off of the root of the pipe work and where it all goes together. It's pretty self explanatory, like the green ones obviously go onto these bits and the yellow ones go onto. To them ones because they're a different size pipe but it's just the root of everything so that when it goes through the hinge it doesn't wiggle around too much and chafe on anything and this spring goes back on here which provides the pressure for it to center itself again these nozzles are a bit of a consumable item so they literally you just drop them into the tube so the tube has holes in probably better to show you on the old one the tube's got a hole in and then that there clicks onto it and then this clamp there just dangling on the top there with the screws pulls itself tight and then also you twist it to whichever one of the nozzles you want to use so this has got two on at the moment and the blank one in my fingers you flick that round to which one you want to use at the time so i'm just building it back up now onto the new stainless steel tube it just it just pushes up there onto the pipe and the clamp will now go on the top then you just tighten it up with the screwdriver and then that's that's it so if you ever knock one off in a field it's dead easy to change this is the uh, on and off shut off 
for the dribble ball nozzles, which are them yellow ones on the floor. Same thing, clips onto the pipe, has a clamp that goes around it. And then inside here, that's a diaphragm and the air opens and closes and turns it on and off like a tap. So the chemical flows along there into the, goes up. If the diaphragm's closed, it can't go anywhere. When the diaphragm opens and lifts up, then it drops the spray out the bottom through one of them yellow bars. So this is now gonna go on here and sit just in front of that one. And it finds the hole. There you go, goes on there now. Then clamp on it and that's that one on. Just connecting all the uh, pipes back on now. They just push in and you pull them, make sure they're on. And this one goes onto there. Push it, pull it, that's on. That one is a fat, fat one, so that goes onto the other line. So click that in, make sure it's all the way in. Get difficult with one hand, but there we go. Nope, yeah, no. Nope. Right, I need two hands. There we go now, just a few cable ties to hold everything back in place along the top there. And then that should do. That's the bent one and that. I've just put it all back together, found I can't fit the end nozzle on because it's too far that way. So I'm going to just slide the tube along here. So I've had to slacken these clamps off and hopefully I can pull this tube up get the end one on and tighten it back up should have measured really that that spacing from that one to that one was the same as them all anyway i think i've got it now i snapped one of these the other day so put a cork in it that was in the hedge let's carry on anyway i'll put that back on now it's off the fur line that i wasn't using Something on the birthday bumper today. Abby's 18, don't know how old Richard is. Anyway, there's a quiz question for you. I've got this radio controlled bulldozer. And I've got this. And this to mount on it. Now, the quiz question is, what am I gonna use it for? And how is it gonna actually make me some money? So if you think you know, leave a comment below. This is R936 and it isn't fitted with a, with a speed camera because it's got a different exhaust on it. That other exhaust had this big square box there which I thought was quite ugly but apparently it's because they took all the EGR exhaust gas recirculation technology off the top of the engine and now mounted it externally. I think that's easier to work on. Also what was there as well was a Cherry Products bag lifter. So a big bag lifter you know, for lifting bags of seed and things like that. Not really handy because it lifts four ton and the tines were adjustable because you're not really supposed to move them on pallet tines apparently health and safety don't like it so i've done a deal on one of them that's coming soon and also they actually now make i couldn't work this out but our bucket says some of our buckets say on them x form and some of them say pro ag and they're made by strymec well apparently now x form buckets are done by cherry because it's something to do with eastern machinery so if we get a bigger grain bucket or a newer grain bucket so we've, we don't have to keep changing it between chipping grain and cleaning it and sanitizing and different things hopefully then we can use that bucket on one on the chip and the old bucket on the chip and the new bucket on the grain shed so he's coming up with a price on one of them as well for me which is pretty good and you've given me like a thing of the steel in the bucket and how it works because it's a bit like what's the word hard ox steel so i'll show you that how that works as well Right, I've propped you up to show you this. So see X form, that's what I'm on about. You know, these are two bits of steel. One's a piece of X form and one's a piece of normal steel, both one mil thick. If you bend them like that, and when you let go, the mild steel is obviously still kinked. Because the X form is pretty much still straight. And then if you scratch that, it's hard to but that just eats into it because this x form steel is a is really really hard and that's why the buckets last so long when you bend it, it it's dead stiff because that's just like i don't know toffee so pretty clever stuff anyway 
That's why you see different buckets with X form written on by different manufacturers. Got to go to Costco now and get some toilet rolls and different things for the farmhouse because there's guests again staying this weekend. It's going really well actually on Airbnb. It's, it's, it, if it carries on how it is, it's definitely going to pay its mortgage. So that's, that's a quite nice bit of diversification. Question for you all there. The cool wall that we're going to do in the workshop for cool tractors, what would you put on it? I'm not going to put something on unless there's a few people all think the same thing. Anyway, that's it for today. If you want to watch another video, it's over there. If you want to subscribe, it's over here. New subscribers, don't forget to say where you're watching from. And we are trying to set up this My Google Map where people can go on and click where they're watching from. And also, don't forget as well, you can order your seed socks from Spaldings at the moment. But be quick, because stocks are running out fast.